Hey guys, it's Jason here. Welcome to another episode of the Oak Mountain ACODs. Well, it's a beautiful day here in Oak Mountain and uh, I thought it would be a great day to come out and continue to get uh, more firewood poles collected so that we can make some firewood with the firewood processor in the spring. The other thing that I wanted to do was talk to you about sustainable forestry and what it means to me and what it means to our family here in Oak Mountain and some of the alternatives. Stick around. Okay guys, before we get going, I just want to show you what I'm working on here. And back in the woods, you can see some trees with orange ribbon on them. And I'm going to zoom in so that you can see that. And basically what we're trying to do here is we want to get some firewood out of this stand, but we want to help the stand continue to grow and be healthy. And so what we're doing to accomplish that is we're trying to space out the trees to some degree and we're making a choice to leave good trees behind. We're not in here for high production and uh, to make the most profit possible. We're in here to help the forest and make a little money along the way. So let's see how we do. Okay guys, so uh, that little dab of wood that we just put on here, um, that was wood that I pulled out using my portable winch as a trial. And I didn't video that, but uh, it was some smaller wood. It's uh, all beech by the looks of it. The biggest piece there is probably five or six inches in diameter, and there's nothing longer than 14 feet there. So this is small firewood. It takes a long time to add up and turn it into a cord. But uh, this is the type of wood that we're looking for to pull out of these stands to make them more healthy and to do some spacing in the stands to give the other trees room to grow um, and also to make a little bit of money off of the woodlot. Okay guys, these are red maple and uh, there's two of them here side by side. There's some smaller ones as well. One of them has to go, I've got it ribboned. I'm gonna try and leave the straighter of the two and get a little firewood here. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, let's take a look at this maple tree here, guys. It's sugar maple. We're gonna favor sugar maples anyway because we do maple syrup. But at breast height, this tree is 11 inches in diameter. That would make beautiful firewood, but it's one of the dominant trees in this stand. So if you can see right over here, there's one with a ribbon on it. That's also a maple, but it's got damage at the bottom of it. These trees are probably 10 feet apart and the foresters from the channel have come back and said, I should try and space 10 to 15 feet apart. But for me, I'm taking that maple out and those two beach and I'm gonna leave this maple and I'm gonna leave that beach. That beach is healthy on top. It's very straight and true. Maybe I'll wanna saw some beach boards out someday for a hardwood project you know, a furniture build or something like that. So here I'm promoting diversity in the stand and I'm also, I'm leaving the best and that's important to me. Okay guys, we brought the, uh, the old drone back in the woods with us and on the side of uh, our property on our 500 acres here in Oak Mountain, there's, uh, there's a piece of property that's about 150 acres uh, in size and uh, I wanted to fly over it with the drone and show you what the alternative to select cutting is. Okay guys, so let's take a look at what we've done here. I left this nice beach. There's another beach there that I'll leave for now because I've got quite an opening here in the center, but that's okay. That'll start to fill in with some natural regen, maybe some softwood trees, fir trees, maybe a nice black spruce. But over here, you can see I left 
a really nice sugar maple and a pretty darn nice beech as well. Now that beech is good on top. Both of those trees are in the 10 to 11 inch diameter range and they're about 15 feet apart. I'm gonna let those crowns develop. Let's take a look at the crowns. We're gonna let those crowns develop and fill in the space over to this tree eventually. Now there's a beach back there that's got a pretty bad looking top, storm damaged top on it. When we get back in that far, we've got a decision to make. Are we gonna leave that one because it's the bigger tree or will we find something that's a little more healthy close by that can stay? That'll be a decision for the future. So the next thing that we've got to do now is get the winch going on the craneman and get this stuff pulled out to the trailer. So guys, if you're a long time follower of our uh, videos on our YouTube channel, you'll know that I just put a video on, on a uh, Honda driven portable winch. And in that video, I said that th that portable winch was probably a little bit slower than the one on the Craneman, but I don't know. What do you guys think? Okay guys, that wasn't a bad little bunch of wood for that first session with the chainsaw. We've got it all twitched in to the Craneman trailer. Now we're going to load it up and uh, see how much more we need to cut to finish this load.
Okay guys, so you tell me um, what you'd rather have. See, there's a nice bunch of beach behind us and I'm sure that the commercial forestry companies would look at this and they would call it scrub, they would call it low grade, they'd say it's not worth their time to come in to cut. It's four inches to maybe eight inch or 10 inch diameter. It's probably only 30 feet tall and it wouldn't be worth their time in their opinion. But to me, there's a lot of firewood back in there. And just because it's beach doesn't mean that I shouldn't leave that and space it and uh, you know, kind of leave the best trees that are in that cluster because beach will also produce food for the wildlife. Um, it's gonna create cover for the soil back there. So as climate change continues to get worse, we're gonna see you know, more erratic storms. We're gonna see heavier rains. We're gonna see higher winds. If we leave a nice stand with, uh, with a high quality or quantity of stems in that area, we'll get less soil erosion as an example. Maybe we'll get less wind damage. And who knows, 20 years or 30 years from now, maybe the temperatures will change to such degree that uh, beech will end up being a predominant tree. Who knows? Okay, so now we're looking back out at the, uh, the Kubota B2601 and the RTV and the Craneman. And we're looking at uh, this little section of woods that we've been working on. Now, yeah, there's a little bit of brush on the ground, but I've tried to cut it up into three and four foot lengths and get it laying on the ground so it'll decompose relatively quickly. See that beach there with the big twist in it? That's not gonna make a log, but uh, to get the stem count that I want in my woods, I'm gonna leave it for now. Um, that will make beautiful firewood down the road. And who knows, maybe somebody will wanna buy a piece of crooked wood like that to put on a sawmill and get a, uh, a curved handrail for their steps or something like that. Uh, anyway, I just like to look back out through my woods and I like to see diversity. Sugar maple, red maple, beech, yellow birch, all right there within 30 yards. I see uh, good spacing, you know, anywhere is between 10 to 20 foot spacing with the trees. And let's take a look at the crown. So we're open here on the left. We've got a spot there to fill in but those crowns can continue to mature. So I think that we're setting this piece of woodlot up for success down the road. I hope so anyway. Now part of uh, being diverse is also to use a woodlot for other things. And uh, here we've got one of our uh, maple sap cans on the tree. You couldn't ask for a nicer day here in the spring. Let's see if the sap is running. Would you look at that? Doesn't get any better than that, guys. Okay, guys, we had to get our uh, Honda portable winch out and get that set up back here in the woods. You can see that we had to come around a corner and I could have used a pulley for that, but I had a big tree, a big maple caught up and I actually had to use both winches to get it freed up out of the snow. So I'm gonna set you guys up now and we're gonna pull with the portable winch out this far and then we'll hook up the Cranman winch after that and uh, take them the rest of the way to the trailer.
I think that portable winch is faster than the Craneman, and I'll tell you why. It pulls about the same speed, in my opinion, and uh, I can take the cable back through the woods just as fast as I can walk. I don't have to wait for the hydraulic spool on the Craneman to let it out. Now there's downfalls, but I think that's a nice little addition to the toolbox. Let me know what you guys think. Okay guys, so there you have it. 
We've got, uh, I'd call that a half a quart of wood on the trailer. So today's wood prices, maybe $130, $140 worth of wood. We've been in here quite a long time today. Um, it takes a long time to shoot the videos and set the camera up, especially when you're by yourself, but that's okay, I love doing it. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna turn around and show you the finished product here. Hopefully we don't make you too dizzy. But here's this stand now. And you can see there's a lot of brush on the ground, but we've opened it up. We've got beech, we've got sugar maple, rock maple, we've got yellow birch. We still have a few more back in there that we need to cut that are ribboned off. I might actually leave one of those trees now just for good spacing, now that I got others pulled out away. You often change your plans here when you're doing work like this. Anyway guys, let me know what you think. Uh, this is what I would consider sustainable forestry. It's micro forestry because of the small equipment and really the small size of the wood as well. Like this isn't uh, gonna make anybody rich, but it makes me feel good and helps me sleep a little better at night knowing that I'm doing the right thing. And we're gonna turn this into kind of a banner woodlot uh, for our area over time. And that's my goal. But like we always say guys, if you like our videos and you wanna see more of them, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, share our videos with your friends and family and help us grow our channel. And come on back and check on us often, because you never know what the Oak Mountain ACOTs are going to be up to next. We'll see you in the next one, guys.